And so the founder suites like $10,500 a night. And I was just like, oh my gosh, because it was mostly just me in there. You're so, like, can I just have the allowance instead? <laughs> I know, well, I got that too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that's yeah, he awesome. Gave, yeah, he gave me $12,000 spending money for the weekend to go to the spa, to go to shop. I went to uh, South Coast Plaza, did some shopping at the mall. Went to the spa a couple of days there on site since he had to do some work and stuff like that. So I was just, you know, kind of moving around. But yeah, we flew the private jet from Scottsdale to John Wayne. But that was my first time being in a private jet. And I mean, I just couldn't even believe just was unbelievable. Welcome to Secrets of a Sugar Daddy. Here's your host. Marcus. Welcome to another episode of Secrets of a Sugar Daddy, the number one sugar dating podcast in Uruguay and the rest of the world. <laughs> Lily's already looking at me funny. Where we pull back the curtains on the good and the bad. And Lily, what is it? The shocking. You're right. The shocking stories of sugar dating. I thought it would shock you, you today. You shocked me. By, by saying shocking. By being compliant <laughs> and saying what you want me to say. So Lily just wrapped up her entire 31-day birthday month. Mm-hmm. It was fun. It was great. Yeah. How many dinners and nights did we celebrate your birthday? <laughs> well, like our mutual birthday, probably two or three. And right. then just celebrating me, I got to go to a <laughs> lovely... Because my birthday was on Easter. Yeah, it was this year. And so I got to go to a lovely Easter brunch with the family. And then I got to do a wonderful Easter dinner with the friends group. Which was us. So you had an interesting experience at your Easter brunch. I sure did. You ran into somebody. I did. Can we just have a moment of silence for the fact that my birthday will probably never happen on Easter again during my lifetime? Really? It's happened about four or five times, I think think four. Yeah. And so I looked up when would be my next Easter birthday. A hundred something or what? I, How old would you be? I didn't get that far. Oh, I shit. got as far as I would be 79 and I was like, probably unlikely. Yeah. Well, tell us about the interesting person or people you ran into. I'm still trying to deal with my mortality right now, Marcus. <laughs> Come on now. Okay. All right. So. You better now. We're the first in the door. <laughs> At our favorite restaurant for celebrating holidays and birthdays and landmark events, which is the Capitol Grill. Over at Biltmore. It's a nice place. We've been there many times. And probably the primary reason it's our favorite spot is because we have the most wonderful server. She is just a ray of sunshine. She's so sweet, kind, funny, caters right to you like your family. Yeah, you guys won't have any other server but her no we had her on thanksgiving in fact she gets yeah, offended fun. if i don't text her and tell her when we're coming so she could find us a good seat and make sure she's our server we always request her and she will come in if you tell her you're celebrating something she'll come in on her days off and work mm -hmm. just so she can serve you that's amazing she brought me flowers decorated the table all the things for my birthday when we went there for birthday brunch. So we're sitting there enjoying our birthday cocktails. With family, your daughter. Yeah, my daughter's son there, my son-in-law, my two grandkids, Trucker and I. And I glance over and there are these two adorable blonde children sitting at a table. And then there's a guy with his back to me. And then there's a guy I can see his profile. I'm like, I think that is Marcus and Paul friends that they went to Tubac with mm -hmm. and but I couldn't see the woman but she must have seen me as she walked in because when she sees me looking over toward her table she jumps up comes over introduces herself hi Lily I mean wait it's right oh I'm gonna have Beep. to bleep that <laughs> she says my real name so I'm like okay thank god because she hasn't blown my cover yet and she's like I'm so and so this must be trucker. I'm like, oh, God, my kids are going to ask me, why is my boyfriend getting called trucker? Um, she's like, I was just listening to your podcast. I'm like, oh, dear God, it's just getting worse. She is so beautiful, so sweet, so bubbly, so charming. 
But luckily, my kids were kind of having a conversation amongst themselves, and they had the baby and their toddler. And so they didn't hear a lot of what she was saying to me, fortunately, because I really just thought my cover was blown and there was going to be a reckoning. And what podcast and why are they calling you Lillian Trucker? (laughs) So 5 million people in the city. And Alejandra and I actually went to dinner with them at Capitol Grill. And that's when we figured out that you guys have the same server because they won't have anybody else either. So we spent some time down in Tubac, a little resort town in Arizona, and they stayed a little longer. And she's messaging me on her way home back to Phoenix area. Hey, you know, ask me about the podcast, ask me about Lily, ask me about Trucker, like literally on Saturday. And then Sunday, you guys run into them. So she knew exactly who you were because I'd sent her photos a group photo of us previously. Now, the couple we're talking about, I've mentioned her many times, but she is the 21-year-old I met many years ago who didn't know who the Brady Bunch was. And we didn't really have a romantic connection, but we stayed friends this entire time, and she ended up marrying her sugar daddy and has two amazing children, even though he's in his 60s now. Yeah. She's 29. Well, it's funny because my grandson is on this kick about what's my birthday? How old was I? Mm -hmm. So the whole day he's asking everyone we meet, how old are you? Including (laughs) our server. So he asks her, I don't know what her nickname is, but he asks her how old she is. Oh, I'm 29. And so I don't know if the kids thought that was weird that she was at a table with two older gentlemen and two little kids, but I'm sure they assumed that those were maybe like the grandkids. Yeah, because like, they like, look like it, don't they? Yeah, <laughs> a little bit. Well, that was a fun little uh, Easter brunch yeah. that you had, and we had a good laugh about that. Mm-hmm. Both of you were texting me at the same time. Oh, my God, you never guess who's here. I just took a picture of yeah. their table and sent it to you. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. Sometimes it could be a small sugar dating world. Mm-hmm. But what do you think of She's everything is advertised, huh? Oh, she's adorable. Yeah. I would love to talk to them and actually get to know them. And yeah, maybe we'll have to do socialize like a triple, with them. Like a little triple dinner or something. Yeah. Soon. All right. Well, what else? We haven't talked about our Patreon, but I'll make it real short and sweet because we do have a guest. It's going and blowing. We're getting new guests all the time. I've added some tiers, which is pretty cool. So you want to go on there, subscribe to patreon.com forward slash secrets of a sugar daddy podcast. And I think our guest is a member, right? I sure am. Well, hello, Desiree. We're going to just bring you in right now. How are you doing? Doing great. Glad to be here. You guys look great. Thank you for having me. You look stunning. Desiree, you command a room. You walked into our studio. We're all like, that is her. And she just walked in like walking down the runway. I saw her from a distance. and I'm like. Oh, she is drop dead gorgeous. Mm-hmm. How tall are you? I'm five eight. Yeah. yeah. And then you've tall, got of course you got water. four inch heels on. <laughs> and I thought these were like my flats. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we are very excited to have Desiree because she brings a little different flavor to the whole sugar dating scene. We don't have enough guests like her to get into some of the topics that we're going to get into today, but I want to get a little bit of your background, kind of where you grew up, maybe a little history of relationships, if you've been married, kids, blah, blah, blah. You know the whole thing. You've listened to our show. Absolutely. Huge <laughs> fan. Glad to be here. Well, I appreciate you listening, <laughs> and I don't know that much about you, so this is going to be very genuine because Lily didn't prep me very much, so... I didn't even prep myself. (laughs) That's no problem. I like an organic experience when we do these. I really do. I don't want it to ever feel rehearsed. Yeah. Understood. All right. right. The floor is yours. Absolutely. Thank you. So I am from Texas. Really? Yes, sure am. Did we talk about this? We did not. I'm from Texas. I know. I know. Oh, 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 (laughs) yeah. You've heard the podcast. I like the Cowboys. I do, but I am a fan of the Chiefs. Oh, you know what? My mother grew up in Kansas City, so, you know, and they have a Texas quarterback. Yeah, a lot of Dallas Cowboys and Kansas City Chiefs fans do seem to kind of have some crossover. Yeah, they they really do, don't they? they? Kind of have a symbiotic kind of relationship there. There you go. All right, we're off on a good start here. See, there we go. So I am (laughs) Texan. I am fairly new to the Phoenix area. I've been here for about five months now. Oh. So moved here for work, so I'm still pretty fresh. Well, I've seen you on Seeking just recently. Yes. So that's why. Okay. Yeah, I haven't been on there for too, too long. Kind of was on there before I got back and all that. So I am 41. 
single, no kids. I do have two dogs and I would go into more details about the dogs, but that's probably a real identifying feature. Since everybody <laughs> so have you <laughs> ever been married? I have. I have. I was divorced about 10 years ago. Okay. So I have only been married that one time and then kind of just dating loosely here and there ever since. So no marriages or serious relationships since. Not for lack of trying, but just... What brought you to Arizona? Work. Okay. Mm-hmm. Can we yeah. ask what industry you're in? Sure. I work in... Let's see how we can say it generally. Affordable housing development. Okay. Okay. All right. Well. Nice. Yep. So I kind of have a big time career, according to what men usually say. Oh, you're big time. I'm like, okay, yeah. But it's, yeah, so it's a big part of my life and a big part of my identity as well. So I moved here kind of sight unseen. No existing friends or family here in the Phoenix area. I just kind of took a leap of faith and made hmm. the relocation. And after spending a few months getting my head on straight and getting my feet under me, then I started kind of having some fun. Yeah. And so that's the last few months have been a little more. Well, you have to be liking this area because you haven't experienced a summer yet. <laughs> right. Yeah, I'm experiencing it. And, you know, back where I'm from in Texas, it was known for its three-digit temperatures as well. So okay. I know it's a different type of heat there, but I'm still accustomed to, yeah. you know, hot, fairly hot, long summers. Well, it's and, not too bad. So we'll see. We get through we'll it. We'll see. Yeah. Well, welcome to Arizona. Glad to have you here. Yep, glad to be here. All right. So you jumped on the sugar dating scene here in Arizona. Yes, yes. And? <laughs> and it's, yeah, it's definitely been something. A few of the recent episodes, because I kind of binged the podcast like in reverse. And so, and one thing I wanted to say before time, I don't want time to run out, but the time frame from when Lily became more regular on mm-hmm. the podcast yeah. and from that point forward, just kind of the whole podcast to me just took a turn for the better. And yeah. it's just been so much more easier to listen to. I don't know if it's just your voice compared to maybe some of the other female voices, but it's palatable. I've watched some episodes more than once, listened more than once, but just kind of the tone of it all has really changed. Well, for anybody thinking of starting a podcast, and even you just met the owner of our studio, and he's been doing podcasting since like forever. Anyway, he said it took him, he's got three or 400 episodes, right? He said it took him a long time to finally get into the groove. He says, I didn't get into my groove for a while. So I knew it was going to be a development phase. You know, we'd never done anything like this. We're just doing it to help people. We didn't really know where to go with the show, but definitely adding Lily (laughs) has been a Gosh, and I was so reluctant to do oh, yeah. this. I'm so glad you did. And then I started doing it, and it's just fun. Yeah, we have a lot of fun with it. So we're a lot more relaxed now. After interviewing so many sugar babies and sugar daddies, I feel like we have a pretty good hold on what's going on out there. And so, yeah, well, I appreciate you recognizing the growth because I felt it. Lily has certainly felt it. And our family is just becoming bigger and bigger. We're starting to realize the impact that the show is having not only nationwide, but worldwide as we hear from people all over the world. So thank you. (laughs) And so it's always nice to hear the positivity that's coming from this. Yeah. And the impact from the podcast for someone like myself, even though I kind of dabbled back when it was seeking arrangement back in the day um, and I kind of got out of it and just stuck with the vanilla world for a while and then kind of reentered recently. But the information and the strategies and the just the advice and recommendations that come from this podcast have completely not only changed my whole experience in a very short period of time, literally after listening to the podcast for one week, I was able to completely realize all the errors I was making and that my <laughs> approach was completely wrong, pictures, fo- you know, everything. Mm. And I noticed an immediate difference, an immediate impact just from even the sillier episodes that you guys have where I'm just drinking wine and I'm like, that mark is crazy. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, there's, there's still pearls of wisdom to be dug there. there. There is. And I read your profile and I even commented to Lily about it. Yeah. And I said, so, did you help her with her profile? Because it's pretty good. She did. She didn't realize it was just. Yeah. The OK. I was like, no, I don't think she's one of the ones that I've helped. But yeah, but it, I definitely took notes of some things that we had said in your profile. And yes. I was like, hmm, interesting. Direct result. My profile's direct result of kind of a compilation of a bunch yeah. of the different episodes. And I kind of just take a little tip tidbit here, tidbit there. But the gains that I've experienced in a very short period of time have just paid off in spades. Well, very good. That's so gratifying. Mm -hmm. That's great. All right. Now let's get into some nuts and bolts. Your ethnicity, what is it? Well, it's black. I know that's exotic. I'm just kidding. Uh, So I'm mixed, but 
I'm African American. Like okay. that's the main. Deal. That's the main because you, um, you do look a little exotic. And I do. And that's helpful. And right. that's also part of the issues that, you know, I've kind of come on here to speak about as an African-American sugar baby. I'll just say black sugar baby because it's quicker as a black sugar baby or actually be honest with you, just regular dating in general. And I made a note to specifically mention that prior to even getting back into the seeking world when I was just on, you know, Tinder or Bumble or just any of the traditional dating sites, Black females just kind of have an uphill battle. You guys had another earlier episode with another black sugar baby, and I remember listening to her episode and really agreeing with what she was saying, but then raising my hand like, but also this, also this. Uh So that's why I'm here. I'm like, okay, must say all my points, must say all (laughs) my points. So that's one thing I wanted to first get out there is that even in just regular old school dating, there was a CNN poll or CNN research study that was done I want to say it was in 2014, where they basically did a poll of like OkCupid and Match. And so they took this survey where they looked at the men and said, hey, you know, out of all the ethnicities, what's your top rank? What are you looking for? What's the bottom rank? All of that. And so black women and Asian men, every single time, were the lowest ranked, lowest percentage even considering all other factors equal across the board from one dating site to the next to the next. And of course, in I want to say in June 2013 or 2014, Seeking Arrangement did an actual research poll and actually found some article there, same thing, that the black women were just the desired less. So that's just something we kind of have to get accustomed to and just get to know. So that wasn't something that just threw me off. And then of course, obviously coming to Arizona, I mean, I wasn't foolish. I knew the diversity kind of was going to be a situation. But like some other sugar babies have mentioned on some other podcast episodes, sometimes it can be played to an advantage if done right, if done accordingly correct. And I will say that the number one helpful piece for me being a black sugar baby, specifically hanging out in Scottsdale, which was my sister's idea. So if she's listening to this, which she probably is, thank you. And she's <laughs> like, you got to go to Scottsdale and be beautiful. And then whoop, whoop, there we go. It worked. But I will say I've got to be polished. Yeah. I have what I call post office lipstick. So I can't even go to the post office without uh, hair has to be done. Nails. I have special skin routine outfits. I don't even repeat an outfit. Everything has to be new and perfect hair done at all times. And only when I'm in that higher echelon of appearance, stomach flat, you know, legs toned, everything, speech, nice and crisp and proper, good manners. Then I notice I do have a lot more options. If I go somewhere, I was at the W yesterday, I walked in there and every single guy was turning around, breaking their neck, trying to take a look at me. Well, that's a nice feeling. I'm sure it was, you know, but I look like a million bucks. I'd hope so. But that's just an example of what I mean. It's just a little extra work, a little extra elbow grease has to happen. And it has to happen every time, all the time. Yeah, I believe that. There's a lot of points I want to get back to. You said quite a bit in a short time, which... I've had experience with almost all of that. I've always said that I noticed when I'm on seeking that the black girls are trying harder and they're reaching out a little more often and they're a little more aggressive and it's because they have to. And I'm not opposed to dating a black girl, but like you said, I want one that's polished, that can speak to me intelligently. And that goes for anybody, not just black, but that goes. That's what I was going to say. That's what you're looking for. Yeah, I get these. I get white girls. I get Latinas that, you know, I don't need somebody with tattoos on the side of their face. I'm not taking them to a function at my country club. And I love taking somebody that I can be proud to be seen with to events and making my friends jealous. I mean, that is so entertaining to me and so satisfying to me is having a beautiful girl on my arm. Now. There's more to it than just having a beautiful girl because most men that we find that we've interviewed that are on seeking are looking for something deeper than that, not just the candy, the eye candy. They are looking for somebody that they can have an intelligent conversation with about whatever it may be. I'm speaking in generalities. You know, obviously there's fringes, but for the most part, I don't want to spend my money and my time with somebody that's uneducated. That's fine if you are, because you've, for the most part, have chosen it, because America is in a great place. You can learn anything you want on YouTube, on the internet. I mean, there's so many great sources to become a better person. So you saying that just 
melts my heart because I think that is great advice to people who want to be successful and want to find that successful man. And you're experiencing that and you're doing the work. Yeah. And you have a good point about the intelligence factor and the education factor. I have a graduate degree and probably 70% of the men who reach out to me, that's their lead in comment is they really? noticed I had a graduate degree. Yeah. So that meant, or the way I worded my profile. So that meant to them that I oozed intelligence or mm-hmm. I spoke of sophistication or, or yes. whatever the phrase is. So I thought that was interesting because, you know, I put all my best photos and I keep my photos up to, I mean, nothing older than two or three months. Mm-hmm. You know, that's how serious I take it. I don't want any problems with them saying, you know, you don't look like your photos or this or that. But the fact that I put on there that I have a graduate degree. And what's interesting is I actually hesitated in putting it because in the traditional dating sites, the fact that I had a graduate degree actually played against me. Some men saw that as an intimidating thing or, oh, she thinks she's some big boss or, oh, she thinks she knows more than me. When in fact, even when I hire people with work, I don't care what education they have. If they're willing to do what they got to do and they're ready to work hard, some people who have the most education are the most insufferable ones. That's you know, if true. I get a resume that says Harvard, I'm like, no, thank you. So I actually almost didn't put on there that I had a graduate degree thinking that <laughs> might be overqualified. You know yeah, what's but funny? it's actually helped me. I also have a graduate degree and I don't think I have ever put that on a dating profile ever, but that's a great piece of advice because well, it's hell. We talk about it a lot too. The most successful people, and matter of fact, Jane the Virginian, we talked about it in her episode is men, they're not wanting just the eye candy, like I said before. If I see somebody with a graduate degree, I am expecting and hoping that I will have so much to talk about when we go out and that we can connect on a higher level. Sometimes I have these really superficial conversations with a 22-year-old, right? A lot of times it's no fault there. They just haven't had the life experience and the education opportunities yet. So... I think if you do have a graduate degree, definitely put it on your profile. I think that's an absolute positive. Oh, that's the other thing I was going to mention is men don't mind helping financially the people that they meet on Seeking for the most part, (laughs) but... Well, maybe not Splenda, Daddy. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) That episode came out last week, but... Or a few weeks ago, but anyway... They, Actually, um, no, I'm editing it right now. Yeah, but by the time they hear this. Oh, okay. Okay, that's what yeah. I was thinking. I was like, did I miss that one? No, yeah. no. Uh, okay. Lily forgets we have to talk I in the past. I forget there's a time lapse. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But men like women who seem self-sufficient. I want to enhance your life. I don't want to be the sole provider for everything you do because that gets old. And a lot of women show a lot of desperation because they need the money. They've got themselves in a bad situation. But if I know somebody's got some education, they've got a good job, that's so much more attractive. Alejandra, that's what I really loved about her. Even though she's 27, she had her own money. She had her own job. She was getting some advanced schooling. She didn't need this. She wanted it. So there's a huge difference. And that's another plus about someone may say, well, why are you on Seeking? Like, uh, that was my next question. Like, what, are you, what are you doing on there? You oh, know I'm going to bleep I'm out like, your real name right there. Oh, shit. God. <laughs> You're okay. I, I knew it. I was like, okay, I'm going to make it at least 10 minutes without. <laughs> but that's part of why I'm on Seeking is I know everyone says this, but it's true. Kind of seeking a higher caliber mm-hmm. type of man. As soon as I moved here, the first thing I did was Facebook dating has always kind of been my favorite because it just seemed to yield more normal, what we call normal men, <laughs> which normal men in my friends groups means has a job has a house that's not yours, you know, has their own, just the basics, really. I had to kind of tone myself down a lot, got accused of, oh, you're materialistic, you drive some nice car, you want this. Just these guys making you feel bad for wanting what you want because it made them feel insecure about or whatever. Even if I never said anything, never mentioned anything, never asked them for anything, it was just a vibe that I didn't like. So I knew that going to a site like Seeking would instantly align me with, at the very least, 
men who were not trying to split a bill at Panda Express, um, <laughs> which actually literally happened right before I moved from Texas. So I, I, I like, like Panda okay. Express. I'd be real, I was like, okay, well, if I'm paying, I'm getting the two entree and I'm upgrading to the walnut shrimp. So just, Oh, the upgrade yeah, to the, the walnut upgrade. shrimp. Yeah. yeah. So getting on Seeking provided <laughs> me with that alignment instantly. Also moving to a city where I didn't know anyone, this kind of gave me an instant pipeline into kind of pre-existing friend groups or, you know, individuals. I know you guys often because of your connections through here, it's kind of sprouted out into this or that. So I'm crossing my fingers that through my meetings through Seeking that I may also kind of connect, hitch on to somebody's friend and then Oh, it's been, unbe- kind of it's been an unbelievable network that we formed, right, Lily? And it, it continues to grow. Absolutely. It, it and you can tell us me. if you listen to the podcast in yeah. a certain order, you can actually just watch it happen right. just right there before your eyes across the episodes. You know, a few years ago, podcast fanboy just reached out and said, hey, can I take Kimmy to dinner? I'll give her a thousand bucks just to take her to dinner. <laughs> We're like, Kimmy's like, okay. <laughs> anyway, that started this whole network where he's just become a huge part of the show. And uh, I mean, he's yeah, texting he's us. like a critical piece of this whole I thing. I think he's you in Ukraine right now. He's been I texting so. us from yeah. Ukraine. So yeah. Fighting the good fight. I well, don't I know what a funny story. <laughs> yeah. So you know how I get on seeking Basically, the premise of my profile just says, hey, I found my person on here, but I'm looking for stories. I'm looking for sugar dating stories. If you're interested in sharing your stories, reach out to me. So I was just scrolling. I was checking my messages. I was just scrolling through. We had talked about with Splenda Daddy, who you guys are going to know by the time this comes out. We were talking about how women just swipe left. Mm Mm-hmm more that they might swipe right one time to every 10 times they swipe left. So I was like, I'm curious. I'm just going to scroll through who's available in my area right now and see how many of them I am remotely attracted to. So I'm scrolling through. I'm like, there's not very many. You wouldn't have swiped right on very many. There was one or two out of probably 30 I scrolled through. Well, that's because out of 50 men, the women are only swiping right on four men. But then I saw a picture and the person's face was scribbled out. And I was like, that guy's physique looks exactly like podcast fanboy. Oh. And then I looked closer. I'm like, oh, that's where he took me in Europe in the background. Oh. That's a coincidence. <laughs> that was podcast fanboy. Then I look even closer and I'm like, oh, this person is in <laughs> Ukraine right now. I'm like, oh, hey, how's uh, seeking life going in Ukraine? <laughs> yeah, he changed his location. Yeah, to I don't know if it said Ukraine. It said something. But yeah, he said he over changed there it in that over area there. he's in. But yeah, I thought that was just so funny that I found him on there by accident. Well, I want to go back to Desiree's very beginning. How did you even hear about seeking or seeking arrangement back then? Well, I actually came across seeking arrangement just through an ad, just through a random an ad. ad on a, a Google search. <laughs> what did you search? this is exactly how i came across it we have the same story yeah i was actually just searching just dating sites just in general and then i started searching luxury dating or dating up dating up kind of and then that kind of came okay seeking arrangement kind of populated and did you have any idea what you were about to sign up for well back then i didn't really have as much I guess, activity with the site. I just kind of logged onto it and Mm -hmm. was on it for a little while and then kind of panicked just about the, (laughs) some of the messages I was getting. And that was like 10 plus years ago when I first kind of delved into seeking arrangement. Now, when I got back on seeking, when it had changed the name and all of that, Mm -hmm. I I knew exactly what I was getting into. Like I, I came in fully prepared or I thought until I started listening to the podcast and then I had to put everything on pause. But getting on seeking, I knew that they had rebranded And I had done, I'm a big research person, so I knew they had rebranded. I knew kind of what was behind that and why, but I knew that the people who were on it, like they say, you know, if you know, you know. So I know, I was like, okay, well, we all know what this is, what this really is. Yeah, people are having to dance around about the arrangement part. Yeah, so I got back on, but outside of just trying to connect with men who are of the right caliber, I also like nice things. I have a good job and I've made a good salary for a long time, but I took on quite a bit of debt with my relocation here Mm -hmm. and, you know, just trying to pay some things down. So I'd rather not use my own money. (laughs) You know, I've helped out family members for a number of years and took care of people for so long. And so honestly, 
I just want to go nice places, do nice things. I mean, just since I've been on Seeking, I went from never going anywhere, going home, going to work, going home, hanging out with my dogs. Now, I mean, I'm in Maestro's one night and then the W the next night and then, you know, Buck and Ryder the next night. There you go. If I wanted to, I could go out all the time. But just being able to really see the city and really have these experiences that had I not been on Seeking, the guys, the men are more intentional. They're more direct. They kind of come pretty direct and correct, which I appreciate. My issue is facing kind of the racial aspect. And so some people ask me, well, how is the racial aspect different with sugar dating versus traditional dating? That's the big question. And that's what the other black sugar baby did not answer that I wanted to make sure I covered or that I clearly explained. Okay. So what it is, so with sugar dating, and you guys have mentioned this several times, as the woman, you're not that you're putting on an act, but you're kind of a different version of yourself. You're um, playing a role. To an extent, right? Mm-hmm. So I found I mostly date white, older, 60 plus gentlemen. That's kind of my niche area. And so I experience a lot of very off color kind of under the table racist kind of racial remarks that they don't realize that I hope that they don't realize, you know, that they're saying just yesterday at the W, the guy next to me called me Shaka Khan. And so anyone who knows who Shaka Khan is knows that I have no resemblance no. <laughs> whatsoever in any way possible. Yeah. But he just thought he was being like, oh, hey, Shaka Khan. Like, oh, I guess that's what that's he thought. So bad. That was his best pickup <laughs> line. Wor- Even the guy oh. next to him was like, yeah. oh, my God, oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> you know, so, so political things. There's a lot of very conservative, since I choose to date mostly 60 plus white, yeah. you know, I understand there's, they're going to have a, more of a conservative political focus, which is no problem. I don't think we need to even talk about it. But they'll say, oh, we don't want to talk about politics. And then after one or two martinis. Yep. Now we're talking about Trump and now we're talking yeah. about Biden. And we're talking about, and I'm just like, no, no, no. But just these, for example, I mentioned that as a black female in a higher level career where you're pretty much having to, it's already an issue being female in the world that I'm in. So being female is already a huge, huge barrier. So then you add black onto that and then I'm 41. So in that world, that's quote young. So then young, black and female, The fact that I'm where I'm at is almost an impossibility. All day long, I'm fighting an uphill battle just with my career, only to change clothes and then go on a date. And now I'm still fighting the battle, Mm -hmm. you know, and I choose to do that because there's goals I'm trying to reach. So I understand that, but I don't think everyone else understands that. And that's just kind of the message I wanted to get out there is that for black sugar babies, you're having to play a role, but then... I'm sitting there next to someone who's making numerous off-color remarks, and I'm pretty much having to kind of just be like, (laughs) you know, it's not like I can say, hey, I really don't like what you said about, you know, I just have to kind of roll with the punches. Okay, let me ask you this. Yes. Why are you choosing to date the older white men? Are you just finding there's not enough black men out there of quality or caliber? That's a great question. And that was actually on my sheet. You guys can't tell, but I have this very annoying, nerdy notes page. But that is one of the questions. And so lately, I have started making that change. So I actually read another black sugar baby actually did an article that was randomly found on the internet somewhere. And she said that that's kind of how she was able to have more immediate success was to kind of shoot 20 plus years older, kind of focus on a certain demographic, and then go from there. So now, again, thanks to you guys, Now I actually have been going on dates with guys that are in their 40s, even 50s, all different ethnicities, Middle Eastern, Black, Latino. So while I have a certain focus, the doors have actually opened recently to where I'm kind of getting activity. Now it's not all the most desirable activity, but activity nonetheless. (laughs) So (laughs) activity from men of all walks of life and like some of you guys, men from different cities and different things like that. To be honest with you, I just seem to have a really good connection with men that are white and in their 60s. We've just had great connection. Now, they're not all making these comments about race and things like that. But that's something that I found is just increasingly common, especially with the Scottsdale specific area. It's just kind of something I've noticed and it's been pretty prevalent. Um, If I don't like the guy, then I have no problem being like, yeah, well, that was offensive. But then if I do like him, I feel like, well, I definitely need to tell him that it's offensive. But what's odd is there's been a few times I've told them that it was offensive and they've been blown over with shock. Yeah, I I believe that. Can't believe that offended you. And I'm just like, well, you just told me that you likened yourself to Robert E. Lee. So... (laughs) 
Confederate general, but okay. Goodness. So it's just so that's what I wanted to mention on the podcast you is know just the funny? ignorance of it all that shocks me. I guess it really is quite a challenge interracial dating. Mm -hmm. I haven't done a lot of it. My first husband was Hispanic, so there was some nuances there that we had to work out. But you hear me talk about Scorpio, the guy that I dated and lived with briefly. And his relationship right before me was with a black woman who lived in San Diego. And he faced a lot of challenges with that. And he had a book that his black sugar baby had written called Swirling. So I don't know if that's helpful to anyone out there. I did glance through it and it seemed like it had some interesting insights and concepts, but she had clearly had issues because she wanted to date wealthy white men, but there were complications with that. And so she wrote a book about it and swirling, I guess, like a swirl ice cream cone, like yeah. the dark and the, van I don't yeah, know. That's, the that's what they call it. The, the chocolate swirl. and vanilla together. Yeah. yeah mm -hmm. I thought Getting that down was with the swirl. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that's I hadn't heard that. that term yeah. prior to <laughs> dating Scorpio. Well, you know, and it, just interracial dating itself is a huge challenge that I think some people tend to overlook in the sugar dating world. So just even in the regular world, just two individuals of different backgrounds, there's just huge challenges and barriers that have to be covered just with that aspect, you know, independent of all the other fun, exciting nonsense that gets brought into the picture when you get into the sugar bowl, as you guys call it. So throwing that interracial kind of feel into it, it's a special circumstance. But now, when you were married, how long were you married? I was only married for about two years. Okay. Was that an interracial marriage? It was not. It was not. Mm -hmm. Okay. So there were other factors. Yeah, other factors. But, yeah. you know, it's, it's actually gone pretty smoothly in that aspect for me here, specifically in the Arizona area. I mean, the state of Arizona, rather, because I've definitely dated people who are in different areas, you know, Sedona, or Flagstaff, and Tucson, and things like that. Now, have you met anyone since you've moved to Arizona that you've really connected with that you see regularly? Yeah, there's a couple that I see regularly. One recently had to go ahead and close, had to shut that down. He just had found out he had. <laughs> so he had a sugar baby before me that lives in um, Venezuela, and he'll probably be listening to this and, oh, well, better listen to it. Uh, so he had the sugar baby in <laughs> Venezuela. This is about to get juicy. <laughs> <laughs> so the sugar baby in Venezuela that he had established for a few years. So apparently that, you know, that was kind of going on. And so what was interesting was I found out that Venezuela is not a place that, like, Americans can just go. So I was thinking, okay, so you had the sugar baby in Venezuela. You went up there, you visited her, and he was just like, well, no, because. Americans can't just go to Venezuela, apparently because of, I guess, clear and present danger or something like that. So if you have an American passport, you can't just like casually go there like you can other places. You've got to uh, apply for some sort of special visa or have some sort of special clearances. It's this whole thing. So I just thought it was unusual that he would choose to entertain a sugar baby in an area that had that sort of... That was that challenging to right. connect. Yeah. Well, so I get a lot of messages from South American sugar babies, Venezuela, mm -hmm. but did he actually had met her and flew down there? To what they said was they connected, I think, in somewhere else. Oh, okay. um, so they found a couple of places where her passport would permit her to mm. go freely and then where his passport would allow him to go freely. I want to say Italy. <laughs> <laughs> Italy? <laughs> yeah, I get Rocky Point. She gets Italy. Okay, so basically he was helping her because she was going through medical school, was still going through medical school and her mom. So when he started to kind of deal with me, I was just like, okay, well, that's fine. You know, people have multiple sugar babies, whatever. So then after a few weeks, he asked if we could be exclusive. He had a good feeling about me. I had a good feeling about him. We were going to set up an allowance. So I was like, all right, well, I was kind of hesitant because I didn't really get a feel from him that he was going to be providing an allowance that was, I feel like when someone's saying exclusive, that means that, okay, that means I'm not going to be able to seek anyone else out. So whatever amount you're talking about needs to be fairly decent mm. for us to do that. And he wanted to see me a lot. So once that got going, it came to light that he still kind of had the thing going with the girl in Venezuela. So I confronted him about it and was like, all right, so what's the deal with her? And he said, well, the thing is, her family's relying on my support. I can't just shut it down. I can't just pull out. And I agreed with him. I understood. And I was just thinking, well, yeah, you're right. I said, so would you say you're just kind of stuck in this? You've got to just be paying until the end of time. 
And he said, well, no, because she's going to be done with medical school soon and then she'll get a job and then she'll take care of everything. And I was like, okay, mm -hmm, we'll see. So anyway, so he wanted to kind of keep that going. And so eventually it just became difficult for me to agree to the smaller, the allowance he was offering was much smaller than what I thought was fair, especially with the amount he wanted to see me, plus a good portion of his quote extra was still going back to Venezuela with no real ending point in sight, despite what he said. And I just felt like I was really getting the short end of the stick, mm -hmm. mainly because the exclusivity piece. If he was willing to kind of let us keep going how we were, I think I would still be going to see him. But he was probably the one out of the maybe four or five that I've dealt with that I actually felt, and he was on the older side, like a lot older than I usually would entertain. How old was he? 69. Okay. Mm -hmm. But we just had a great connection. We had a great time. I always look forward to seeing him. We just had so much in common. And I was thinking, I was like, gosh, I never thought I'd have so much in common with somebody so much older than me, almost 30 years. But we did. The physical attraction was strong and we were laughing and joking, had us a great time. But anyway, it just, that whole thing, I was like, you just need to go to Venezuela and just deal with that. And then we can talk later or whatever. But that was probably the best connection I've had across all the categories of connection. And he kept his racial comments to a minimum. And the few that he made, I felt comfortable enough to say, hey, that's one of those comments that I was talking about. He's like, oh, I'm like, okay, just that's, that's, that's one of those. I'll be like, we don't, we don't want to undo the Emancipation Proclamation, okay? Thank you. What <laughs> industry was this guy in? Construction. Oh, okay. Yeah. And was he retired? Working towards retirement. Getting oh, there. getting there. Getting there. Nice. Yeah. Oh, goodness. All right. Well, it sounds like you've had quite a few people reach out to you here in Arizona. How has the experiences been? They've been pretty good, you know, to be For honest. For the most part? Yeah, yeah. The actual experiences that become actual experiences, mm -hmm. they're not bad. The communication that I get, the requests and the things that come through this site are kind of where what I like to call the nonsense really goes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We've seen a few of those lately. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've had a lot of guys kind of coming to me that have kind of a black fetish or they kind of just want to dip their toe into the black water, which, hey, I'm all for it. Dip your toe into the black water. But it's just the way they come across. And so that's a note I wanted to make sure I verbalized on this podcast is if you haven't been with a black woman before and you want to kind of transition over and nothing wrong with that because I had to transition over to white, you know, so I get it. But the way to come across, you know, you don't have to have a special song and dance in a ductory comment of, hey, you know, I've never really dated black, but you know, you have what they say is, well, I've never really dated black before, but you have such a presence about you and you're classy, you know, you're obviously well-spoken and, you know, you have this look and they kind of have this whole little, so I would prefer that, that they not do that because it makes it seem like, well, I normally wouldn't entertain a black yeah, but it just makes it you're awkward. Of, you know, just even if that's what you think, okay, just come at them the same way you would anyone else. Nothing wrong with saying, hey, I don't have a lot of experience with African American women, so you excuse me if I come across as whatever, like that's fine. But don't make it like it's this, you know, you got to give this introductory paragraph and, and explain why mm -hmm. and this and that's not necessary. But there are some that clearly are. I want to see what the inside of a black butt cheeks look like. I can't. Yeah. Oh dear God! I, I want to see that. Shut black Shut the butt. hell up! I just you pulled up. had that comment. Oh my! Oh, that's not even the worst of it. Oh I, well, I just pulled up two <laughs> messages. So we have this WhatsApp group that we started from our party. So we have about I don't know fourteen, fifteen people on there. So this guy sent one of the sugar babies. Here's a couple messages. One of them is. I'm very genuine, want to shove my face in your tits and butthole with the most respect, and I'm generous. With the most respect. Yeah. Well, in that case, okay. <laughs> and then, as long as you're doing it respectfully, yeah. just get in there. That's his lead-in message to her. <laughs> All right, so here, here's another one. Here's another lead-in message. Oh, man. Loving what I see, would love to work something out. No interest in wasting your time, so just going to be brutally honest. I would pay you $300 to use a vibrating wand toy on you for an hour. No expectation of sex. Just looking to get you off and watch you have a good time. If you're interested, let's work out some details. Now, this one got mixed reviews because some of the girls are on. Bad. Yeah, some of the girls are on. They're like, hey, sign me up. <laughs> like, <laughs> and others are like, are you serious? <laughs> But that's what he led with. Yeah, I know, right? And then he wouldn't even 
<laughs> video chat her. Yeah. <laughs> like after all that. And, and yeah. the, the lead ins really, really set. Uh, <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah, really set these and guys apart. I was curious when she did that because she had screenshot what his username was. Yeah. He had zero photos mm -hmm. and he had like one line profile. Yeah. It was nothing. It was garbage. But he, yeah, he thinks he's going to catch him a, a hottie. All right. Let me ask you this. Because I think we brought this up with the last Black Sugar Baby. Do you feel like you get offered less of a, a compensation or allowance or PPM? Absolutely. Not only do I believe I get offered less, CNN also agrees. CNN. CNN. And, and tell us about that. Yeah. So CNN, among a few other news outlets, have performed numerous research studies. And that's what a lot of my, all my stuff is. Um, have performed numerous research studies mm -hmm. over the last 10 years focusing mostly on black females and dating, like I mentioned before. And then I've just kind of taken an extra step to kind of merge the data and figure it all out on the, in the sugar dating world. But without a doubt, I mean, even the guy that I had that great connection with, he wanted to see me three, four times a week, and he was offering 1500 a month for a monthly what? For And that's oh, for exclusivity. No. Yeah, that's... No. I was offended. I, that's like, four, I that's like no, less than you. 400 bucks a week. Yeah, and we're seeing each other constantly, yeah. you know, and then wanting exclusivity. But in general, for your question, when that was also on my uh, notes list, just across the board, a monthly allowance, PPM, even, and this, this one really shocked me, even restaurant choices. The research showed that black sugar babies were more likely to be taken to lower quality restaurants on their first couple of dates, not just like coffee, meat and greets and all that, but their first couple of dates routinely taken to lower quality or less expensive restaurants, less expensive vacations. Actually, black sugar babies get less offers for, you know, the fully paid vacations. Now, of course, I personally have been on a private jet and done all that, but you know, the rest of the- You, you go, know. girl. Well, um, and, but so, you've but, also done the extra work. I mean, yeah, and it, it's been tremendous extra work. Well, yeah, yeah, you just correct. got done yep. saying that. Yeah, that's right. Miss Venezuela got to go to Italy, and you got taken Rocky to Rocky Point. Point. Rocky Point. No, Come Rocky, on now. Rocky Point was super fun, though. <laughs> yeah, it is. I'm yeah, joking, it, but I it was could like, be fun. Rocky yeah. Point. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so the general, just the money in general is just significantly yeah. lower, and that was proven. And then also, you know, the type of restaurants, the gifts, the, the luxuries, just some of the uh, extras and just some of the little things that are kind of the norm for some sugar babies. Black sugar babies are just notoriously offered less and also just not treated as well. Treated more like, and I know we all, all women in this sugar dating world experience kind of being treated a little bit like, you know, an object. And I was actually just listening to an old episode earlier today where there was one of the guests said she liked to be objectified or something like that. Oh. And I was like, I know. <laughs> I, 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 I know. Ah. It's like, yeah. no. But with the black sugar babies in our world, it's, it's not just being treated like an object, but being treated like a less valuable object that we should be lucky to be in the presence of these guys and you take what you can get here's your 200 dollars ppm and your oh god a month. Like, no my car notes okay so a month. everything she's talked about is 100 percent true identifiable i have experienced this, this what do we do to change it well good question <laughs> <laughs> that, well it's like how do you help the homeless you know it's like everybody wants to help yeah. the homeless but how do we do my, that my job so <laughs> yeah. i actually do help the homeless it's tough so. i would love <laughs> for the black community to get a better share, get a, you know, get as closer to equal as we can get, but how? There actually have been several black sugar babies like myself. I'm one of those people who rarely just kind of, you may have picked up on that. I'm not a big sit back and be quiet type. I just kind of, if I'm serious about something, I'm big on my data though. Like I don't want to just spout loose opinions off. I like to try to make sure I'm speaking based off of at least some sort of fact. What's been said is that in order to try to fix this or change this is that black sugar babies like myself have to be vocal about it, which here we go. Step one, this podcast has, like I said, when we first started, has helped me tremendously. But me being here today, which I appreciate you guys, because I know you have a lot of people probably trying to come and be on the podcast, but being vocal and doing the extra work, which does suck that we have to do the extra work. But I think about it like this with my career, same thing. There's certain hurdles that I have to go through that my white counterparts don't, but if I want to reach the goals, I can sit there and focus on that or I can figure out, OK, well, what are the extra hoops? OK, well, let's get to doing it. So having that knowledge, not being naive, understanding kind of the limitations with the sugar dating world and just making sure that we're not accepting the nonsense. You know, the guy with the sketchier allowance, as much as I liked him, 
I had to go ahead and move on. You so, knew your worth. Yeah. So I'm, That's I'm not good. going to accept, I think, 1500 a month for the amount he was wanting to see me. It just wasn't right at all. And he knew that. So I feel like part of that's on him, but then part of that's on me. So what one of the previous black sugar babies who's more vocal in the news was saying was that us sitting back and kind of accepting it is what's going to allow it to perpetuate. So when I sit in a date with a guy that's 65 and he's making racist comments, if I sit there and (laughs) then that's a part of the problem. I've got to be able to have a backbone in a respectful way, say, hey, look, we're having a great time, but those type of comments, I really prefer we don't cover that topic when we're hanging out. So unfortunately, another bit of proactivity that we have to be considerate of. But, you know, if I follow those rules, I'm able to reach the goals I'm reaching. So I'm willing to do that. So women like myself have to be willing to stand up for that and also not just kind of sit back and play a victim mentality, but also just like you said, right off the bat, well, what can we do to fix it? What can we do to get to the bottom of it? So, you know, number one is definitely awareness. Having men who might be listening to this Understanding, you know, if you have a black sugar baby, you do have to be a little more careful about those race-based comments and those political-based comments, at least just at first, and just have a little sensitivity Mm -hmm. with that sort of thing. You know, even if you're not sure, if maybe you're saying something that's off base, just having a little bit more consideration and sensitivity. But to be honest, though, Marcus, I don't see it really having any improvement or changes right now in the sugar dating world. And a lot of people would say they don't sympathize for someone like myself or black women like myself because they see this as a luxury and extra. You don't like it? Don't sugar date. Oh, is poor Desiree being marginalized for her fancy car? You know, they don't want, they don't care about that. So we're not getting a ton of sympathy, but I do want to say that taking the extra steps, just really being open-minded. Oh, and security is another thing too. I found out that uh, black sugar babies have a higher percentage of experiencing violence Mm. from their sugar daddies than their white or Latina or Asian counterpart. I I believe it. We're more assaulted and raped and things like that too. And I I did not know that. Well, I've always preached and I've practiced self-accountability. We're all going to be behind some barrier. Even as a white male, there's so many barriers that I've had to break through. I was working at Jack in the Box. I was a manager. Literally, you'd find me working the fry machine sometimes and and the drive-through window because my employees didn't show up. So the area managers who are in charge of multiple you know, they just go from store to store, kind of see the issues and then move on. So I asked my boss, I'm like, hey, how do I get that job? And he goes, well, we only hire people with MBAs. So you'd have to get your MBA. And I, I didn't have, I had a college degree. And, you know, and, and he has this criteria. So instead of me crying about it and whining about it, and I knew those guys made six figures, I was half of that. I went and fucking got my MBA. So I did the work. And then I ended up getting fired from the job because I hired an illegal alien, believe it or not. I mean, that's the only people I could find to work. <laughs> yeah. But well, that shows you're into diversity. Yeah, you know, I'm into diversity. Diversity and inclusion. So. Uh, but I did the work. And then there were some other things that I found myself kind of when I started dating again after my divorce. When you're happy, I mean, when you're married, not exactly happy, but when you're married, I kind of let myself go because I, I didn't have to impress anybody and I gained a lot of weight. I just, I wasn't feeling good about myself. And then when you get in the dating world, I saw the kind of men that they're getting swiped right on and I didn't look like them. So I got myself in the fucking gym and I started working out and eating better. And I didn't blame other people for it. I knew there was a barrier because I was not getting the swipe rights at all. And it was very frustrating. And that's what led me to seeking is because I'm like, I got to use some kind of a cheat code because my looks is not working. I'm older, I'm balding, I'm overweight. (laughs) So I'm going to have to use a cheat code. But since then, I've continued to get on a healthier path. And I just encourage anybody of any ethnicity, if you're having trouble breaking through, just look inward in yourself and do the best that you can. And that's all you can do at that point. Us as a society, we can't, we're like a big, slow moving ship. It'll move, but it takes some time. It does. A lot of, it might take centuries (laughs) <laughs> you don't have that time to wait. And I had to do the same. I had yeah. to. Oh, God, no. I'll never see another Easter birthday. <laughs> I don't have right? centuries. Yeah. I was able to change my appearance significantly as well over the last few years, which made a huge, huge, huge difference. Mm-hmm. So I, too, yeah. had to go through some changes and some transitions and kind of make some of those hard decisions. And 
and then watch that kind of pay off. So that's why whenever guys are like, I don't care about looks, I'm like, when I didn't look like anything, you didn't care. Yeah, that's right? some bullshit right yeah, there. Oh, you that, care. Guys yeah, anybody care. told you that is Ooh, absolute lying. I got to know one thing before we run out of time. <laughs> Tell me about flying private. Was that a sugar date? It sure was. Let's hear it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was actually a weekend trip. And this is a guy who he only seeks kind of like a travel sugar baby. Mm -hmm. So I am on his list. So whenever the next travel comes up, I, I just stay in the orbit. Like I don't bug him because he's, and this guy's actually a billionaire. And his really? Name, his, uh, his podcast name is Tim. Yeah. So Tim's a billionaire. Wait, he's um, been on our show? No, no, no. No, no but that's, she's that's, just that's, calling him yeah. that. Oh, you so gave I, him a name. So okay. That, Wait, okay. And, and, and you met him on Seeking? Yeah. He was my, actually my first Seeking encounter when I first got back on. Here in Arizona? Yeah. You met a billionaire here in Arizona? Yes. Nice. Yep. Tim, well, I mean, Kimmy did too, but. Tim, the billionaire Tim. with a private yeah. jet. Yeah. Yep. We went to Laguna Beach. And so basically it was a weekend. He had to go there for work for some reason in Orange County. But anyway, so then we ended up it being like a four day weekend. We stayed at a resort and the suite we stayed in was like $10,000 a night. And I didn't know that as I told my friend where we were staying at just out of safety. And then she was like, what's the name of the suite you're staying in? And I was like, well, it's called the Founder Suite. It's this place <laughs> called the uh, uh, Montage Resort. She said Founder Suite. And then she sent me this screenshot. Yeah. And so the Founder Suite's like $10,500 a night. And I was just like, oh my gosh, because it was mostly just me in there. You're so, like, can I just have the allowance instead? <laughs> I know, well, I got that too. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's yeah, he awesome. Gave, yeah, he gave me $12,000 spending money for the weekend to go to the spa, to go to shop. I went to uh, South Coast Plaza, did some shopping at the mall. Went to the spa a couple of days there on site since he had to do some work and stuff like that. So I was just, you know, kind of moving around. But yeah, we flew the private jet from Scottsdale to John Wayne. But that was my first time being in a private jet. And I mean, I just couldn't even believe just was unbelievable. It was yeah. you just get in and you just fly straight to. And I, I was telling him, I was like, hey, can I bring this water in here? And do I need to turn my phone? And he was just like, no. Was it his plane? No, it was actually one of his friends who I guess has uh, retired from being a pilot, a chartering pilot mm -hmm. or whatever. So it was his. Gotcha. So he was chartering it from his friend. Wow. What I a, what only a dream date. ever flew private with Scorpio. That was on set jet. Do you know what that is? I am. So it wouldn't just be you okay, on the plane. It, it could be just you depending, but you know, set jet went out of business. Did they? Yeah. Yeah. And it was kind of interesting since that was kind of my first experience. So then, you know, it's really hard after that. Cause then, you know, you go back to the regular and then they're like, oh God, <laughs> yeah. Oh now God. how old right. is this guy? 70. Wow. Tim is 70. Mm -hmm. And what industry was he in? He was in like, like a government contractor type of company. Mm. Awesome. Yeah. He owns a company, big, big company, but it's kind of like a government contracting type of industry. So, well, that's fun. Yeah. Heck well, yes. Well, anything else on your list that oh, I want to make sure we cover all the big points? Or we'll just have her back. She's yeah. well spoken. Oh my God. We could talk for two I or know, three was, more hours I easily. I was hoping, I was going to say, I was like, all right, Lily, squeeze me back at the end of the podcast list because there's at least two pages of stuff that I, <laughs> I didn't even yeah, touch. Yeah, we'll on. put you back in yeah, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> so I just wanted to, I guess the last thing I'll mention is that some men on the site have on their profile, you know, no boss babes no independent types, kind of that's what they always say. They want a submissive. Yeah, and I just want to say that it's entirely possible to have a boss babe, which I kind of put myself in that category, because I'm running the show at work all day long. When I go home, I don't want to make decisions. I, right. want, to, I want to be second in command. I want to be submissive. Yeah. I want to be pampered. I want, yeah, I don't want to tell you what to do. I don't want to rule. I don't want to run the show. I don't want to be the ruler. You know, so I just want to make sure that guys out there, sugar daddies out there know that you don't have to count out a whole crop of women who you see as a boss babe or independent or whatever, because you'll be surprised that those will be the ones who pamper you the most, who are the happiest to stand in second in command and just have you take care of everything and then have me take care Isn't of Isn't that nice you when yeah. you don't have to be in charge of planning everything? Yeah, it makes me so happy. And then at work, I'm a whole better person. I mean, they're already noticing it. They're like, wow, you're like smiling and laughing. I'm like, mm. <laughs> well, you know, I've got something I going on after work. Mind private. your business. I know. I'll be like commercial. <laughs> Good luck with that. <laughs> no, so yeah, but I just wanted to end with that though. That boss babes are boss babes because they have to be a lot of times, not because they want to be. All right. Well, that was fun. Desiree, do you enjoy that? Absolutely. And time does go fast, doesn't it? Sure it? Does. <laughs> oh yeah. man. It's good that she's local too, because yeah. every once in a while we'll have a last minute cancellation. Yeah. And mm -hmm. 
maybe we can see if you can be available. I don't Absolutely. know what your work schedule's like. No, it's fine. And I definitely have. I have a feeling there's a lot of stories we did not get into. Oh. And there's going to be a lot more stories that you're going to be experiencing soon. Absolutely. And since you are a member of our VIP, I am. you will be coming to our next party. I'm I'll just telling you that right now. I'll be ready. All right. We're in the planning stages of that. We'll have that announcement soon. Lily, anything else? No. I think we're this good. This was great. Well, if you guys want to share your crazy sugar dating stories, you can always go to our website at secretsofasugardaddy.com. We'd love a follow on Instagram, same name. And then like Desiree, we would always, always welcome another member of the family to our VIP Patreon group. And that is patreon.com forward slash secrets of a sugar daddy podcast. I'll have a link to it at the bottom of this episode. It's only $10 a month, and we put a lot of exclusive photos on there. There's photos on there you see that nobody else sees. We put all the episodes, all the extra sugars. You'll get in priority line for our party. Right now, we have some coaching and profile review opportunities. So, Lily, actually, I have two or three for you. Yeah, you know, I know. Work. They're piling up. <laughs> I'm going to get after them really Yeah, we're going to get to those. I'm almost settled in my new place. Well, semi-settled. Yeah, she's been a little bit swamped with the move. Oh, gosh. Well, congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, if any of you guys have moved lately or any time, you know what to, what a headache that can be. Well, and not only that, we combined two households. Oh, yeah. We combined my apartment. Oh, that's right. And Trucker's entire home in the Biltmore area. And it's just a lot. Mm -hmm. And we have stairs. I need you to help Trucker carry something up the stairs. I think I'm busy that day. <laughs> <laughs> but I got some guys that, Come can, that, on are, now. that are strong. We can send them over. Goodness. Oh, and subscribe to us on YouTube. Oh, yeah, yeah. So we started our YouTube channel. I can't monetize anything until we get 500 subscribers. I think we have 318 to, as of today. So we need a few more of those, so... We'd love that. Any ways that we can start paying for this podcast would be wonderful. Paying for Lily. Yeah. <laughs> the Romeo, the studio guy, was like, well, if you don't like editing, I edit. Oh, he has no idea what he's in for. And I was like, no, I'm kind of OCD about this podcast. I yeah. want it to be just right. Yeah. I don't think I could put it in somebody else's hands. Right. <laughs> but he charges probably about... Well, uh, he charges less than I do because I do $25 an hour. Yeah. We'll, so. we'll keep you around for a little while. Maybe. <laughs> All right. We got to go. Desiree, thank you again. No Look thank forward you. to seeing you soon. All righty. All right. Until next time. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks for joining us. If you'd like to connect or even be on the show, we'd love to hear from you at secretsofasugardaddy.com. 